highlight a few things. Uh, just, just two points, because of time this morning I, I wanted to highlight. One is, why do we need fire on the altar? Two, how do we bring back that fire for, for this hour? Um, with that, I'm going to rush through. My wife warned me, don't rush. But I don't have a choice. I have to speak again in Richardson at 12 uh, uh, something. So here we go. <laughs> Time to check for <clears throat> fire on the altar. Why? Why do we need to check for the fire? Let me give you a few points. Number one, without the fire of God, there is no true worship. If you wanted to worship the Lord, you have to have fire. Without the fire of God, worship becomes a ritual. Oh, it becomes a song. Yeah. It becomes something we just go through. Therefore, we need the fire of God. The Lord warned Moses, uh, through Moses, the Israelites, by saying, the fire must be kept burning on the altar. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. What's the next phrase? Shouldn't be? Go out. That's it. This is the command. Let me, let me share a brief uh, story just to make it this personal for, uh, with you. Uh, once I was uh, flying from, um, uh, from here to uh, Rome to speak at a conference. As I was flying, in, uh, uh, I was reading a book about worship. And, um, and I heard a voice within and say, stop reading the book. I was really enjoying it. I stopped reading the book. I said, what is happening? And then after a few minutes, I heard a voice saying, where are you going? I said, I am going to Rome to speak, trying to justify what I'm doing. Very quiet. After a few seconds, came back. Why do you preach my word? At this stage, I forgot I was in a plane. I started sobbing. I was so scared to death. The Lord said, why do you, why do you preach my word? After a little while, he said, do you preach my word because you love my word? Or do you preach my word because you know how to preach? I sat crying and sobbing. And I arrived in Rome. A person who invited me came and, and, uh, and, and he said, let me take you to, uh, for dinner. I said, no, I don't want. Just take me to the hotel. He took me to the hotel. I came, I walked in. I was on my face. I was crying, just weeping. Then after I, I woke up at 2 a.m. in the morning, and with this passage, the Lord said, go and read Leviticus chapter 6, verse 9 through 8. It says, don't let the fire go out. Don't let the fire go out. That night, the Lord gave me a warning. Many started with fire, but they remained was the smoke. A lot of people started with the fresh fire, with the, the burning passion for God. But at the end, it's just smoke. He said, they lost the fire. He said, as long as you live, as long as you speak my word, don't lose the fire. That night I made, that night I made a covenant with the Lord. The day I, the day I lost the fire, I, st I will stop preaching. Why? Because without the fire, there is no true worship. Second, we need the fire for the prophetic destiny. How many of you have a, a, a prophetic destiny you are still waiting for? Come on. 
Every one of us. But you cannot fulfill that prophetic destiny without the fire of God. Moses tried in Egypt. He even tried to kill a person. He tried everything through his own ability. But he couldn't do anything until the day he saw the fire. A need is not good enough to start a ministry. Only the fire of God can take you to that prophetic destiny. One day while he was walking, he saw a, a bush burning. He saw the fire. The only thing he saw was not the need of his people. He saw the fire. When he saw the fire, he said, what is going on? Let me go and see. When he came out of that fire, there was a voice. Moses, Moses, he never heard for 80 years his vo he, the voice of God. He was just waiting for that prophetic destiny until that day. The voice came not, not out of the need, but out of the fire. He heard the voice. He said, I heard the cry of my people. I have seen their suffering. I came down. If I am here, if I am coming down, if I am coming down to walk with you, I am a consuming fire. You need, to, you need to understand the fire in order to walk with me to set this generation free. It's not your experience, it's not your ability, it's my fire that will burn the, the, the yoke of slavery. He started with that. We move on. You have to rejoice because I'm rushing through. <laughs> For divine guidance. When we lose the fire, we lose the guidance of God. Here is what happened. When the Israelites came out, by the day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way. And by night, a pillar of fire. The first, the, the only thing he gave them is said, okay, you are free to go into the promised land. I am taking you, but I will give you one thing, the fire. The fire will lead you, the fire will guide you, the fire will take you into that promised land. As long as you are willing to follow the fire. Number four. We need, why do we need the fire? For divine protection. For divine protection. The protection of God is in the fire. Here is what he promised Jerusalem. The declaration of the Lord. I will be a wall of fire around it. I will be the glory within it. Unless we have the, the fire of God around us, we cannot experience the glory of God. The glory cannot exist without the fire of God. The, the, the word of God says, the Israelites saw the fire of the, the glory of the Lord like a fire on the mountain. The protection of God. We need a protection. Therefore, we need the fire of God. We need the fire of God for the voice of God. What, what, what a word I received this morning. Wow. I will meditate upon that. And Barbara, does, she doesn't remember, but years ago in Colorado Springs, she gave me a word. I, I typed it, I kept it in my, in, the, in my Bible for many, many, many years. Because what I'm doing today is the word you gave me. Amen. Yeah. I, I carried it in my Bible for many, 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 many years. Be why? Because she is carrying the fire. When we are carrying the fire, we bring the word of the Lord. That is the lasting word of God, the truth of the word of the Lord. Here is what he says. Moses said to them, on the earth he showed you his great, what? His great fire. And you heard his word from out of the fire. The, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his majesty and we have heard his voice from where? Everybody come on. 
from the fire. Therefore, don't let the fire go out. Because when, when you let go the fire out, we lose the voice of God. And then we replace with our attitude, with our assumptions, with our desires, with whatever we think it's the right thing. Because the true word of God has to go through the fire of God. The, 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 the word of God needs to be tested by the fire of God. Here is why we need the fire of God for a spiritual renewal. The New Testament is when Jesus came, the greatest renewal on earth that humanity waited for. The Lord prophesied that my son is coming. It's, it's spoken. Jesus came. And John the Baptist, who was the forerunner, came and said, Indeed, I baptize you with water unto repentance. But the one who is coming after me, he, might, he, he, he is mightier than I. He will be baptized you with, everybody say with me. Fire and Holy Spirit and fire. That's what we need. The New Testament is started with fire. The New Testament is started with fire. I wish as much as we pray for the feeling of the Holy Spirit, we also pray for the fire of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus brought both the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of fire. He will baptize you with fire. And on the day of, on the day of Pentecost, that's what happened. Now, let me move on to the next point. I'd like to spend a few minutes on this one. If, if that is the case, if that is true, then how do we get back the fire of God? What would it take to bring back the fire of God? How many of you want, truly, truly want the fire of God? In your life, in your, in your ministry, in your, in your city, in your nation, around the nations? How many of you say, I don't care about anything else but the fire of God? I am willing to pay the price for the fire of God. If that is the case, now, just for a few minutes, please focus and walk with me. Forget about everything else. Uh, 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 so I'm, I'm just going to walk you through. Here is, here is the way we bring it back, through prayer. Elijah, you know the story. This is nice because everybody knows. And Elijah, uh, when he prayed, here is what he did. Hear me, O, o Lord, hear me, that these people may know that you are God and that you have returned their hearts back to you. When you pray for the fire of God, your motive has to be right. It's not the lack of prayer, it's the, it's the wrong motive. He did not pray to prove that he's a prophet. He did not pray that, God, I am your prophet. They are not. No, 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 no. He, he, his motive was right. His motive was so that they will know you are the only true God. Why do you want the fire of God in your life? Why do you want the fire of God in your home? Why do you want the fire of God in your church, wherever you are? What is the motive? Is that to exalt the Lord? Is that to glorify the Lord? Is that to bring the Lord higher than whatever we have seen him? Why? What is the motive? The sec one is the glory of God. The second is the, the salvation of the lost. So that you have returned their heart toward you. Lord, send the fire for these two reasons. For your glory and for, for the restoration. And for the salvation. And for the repentance of the, the sinners. When he, when he prayed that, what happened? Look at what, look at what happened. The fire, come on, talk to me. The fire, what happened? The fire came down. When we are, we, when we are in the right motive with God, he cannot hold back the fire. He will send the fire. When we clear our motive, he will send the fire. He didn't spend a lot of time. He said, simply, Lord, let them know you are God. Let them know that you are bringing them back. And then the Lord said, here is the fire. Here is the fire. Here is the fire. Now you can glorify me. Now you can lead these people into repentance. Now you can instruct these people. 
The fire of God is not something we beg the Lord for. He is willing to release. That's the promises of God. He will baptize you with fire. This is the word of God. But the motive. How did, how did Elijah start this? Let me, let me walk you through. One, Elijah, by, by the way, you can talk to uh, Robert, but Elijah started in the New Testament. We don't see it in the, in the Old Testament first. We see him in the New Testament. We see it in the book of James. He said, Elijah was just like, like us. He was just like us. Touch your neighbor and say, he was just like you. There, therefore, there is a hope for you. There is a hope for you. There is a fire waiting for you. If he can receive the fire, you can receive the fire. If he can change a nation, you can change a nation. Just one person. And he, he, when he looked at the situation of the Israelites, he started crying to the Lord because they turned, they turned their back to the Lord and said, the, the idols are the one that is providing for us. And he said, Lord, I am jealous for your glory. Then he went into prayer. Amen. And ministry begins on our knees. Amen. It's not on our pulpits. Come on. Come on. He was on his knees. He was crying for the glory of God. We don't see him preaching. We don't see him prophesying. But he said, Lord, I am jealous for your glory. I am jealous for your glory. Can you do something? Elijah, what do you want me to do? Close the heavens. Let them know that true blessing only comes from you. Watch this. He said, Elijah, I'm not going to close the heavens. And then what? I created it. But I'll give you the key. I'm going to give you the key to close it. Why, Lord, why do you trust me with the key? Because I found you on your knees. You are crying for my glory. It's not about you. It's about my glory. Therefore, I can trust you with an authority. I can give you the authority. I can give you the key. Because I know what you are going to do with that key. This, this young man, Elijah, he took the key immediately. He went to the source of problem, to the, to the palace. That's where they were killing the prophet and doing all kind of stuff. He said, why? Because he had the key. He had the key, he had the authority. He went straight to Jezebel's place, to her palace. He said to the king, king, I have a message for you. Who are you? Don't worry about it. What is your experience? Well, never mind about that one. What tribe are you from? That's not the issue. Then who are you? I am the one who is jealous for the glory of my God. I am the one who is crying. I am the one who feels that I am alone by myself. I don't see, I don't see anybody crying with me. I am alone, I'm, but I can't give up. I can't give up. It's about my nation. It's about the glory of my God. I have to cry for the fire of God. And they said, then why did you come here? I came to inform you what I'm going to do. I, 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 you know, I, didn't, I didn't come to ask you your permission. I know you are a king. But I came to inform you. What are you going to inform me about? I am going to lock the heavens. I am going to lock the heavens. He didn't say that I'm going to kill somebody. He said, I am going to lock the heavens. Until the word will come out of my mouth, there will not be not only a rain, a drop of a water. Can you imagine the confidence? There is no, no drop of a water. Why? Because God Almighty has trusted me with the key. The king said, today I understood something. What do you understand? I know now why Jezebel, my wife, doesn't like you guys. <laughs> because the way you think is just crazy. No one, no one has a key to close the heavens. Who do you think you are? It's not about me, it's about my God. Touch your neighbor and say, it's not about me, it's about my God. It's about him. 
It's about his kingdom. It's about the Lord. It's about my nation. It's about the nations. It's not about me. Then he said, sir, goodbye. What did he do? He took the key with him. He took the key with him. He said, bye. Because he didn't believe it. He didn't want to argue. Hear me very carefully. When you have a spiritual authority, you don't waste your time in arguing with people. You, you don't try to justify who you are, why you do what you do, because you have the authority. You just use the authority. You don't try to justify your existence. You don't, you don't say, this is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm doing this. Please believe me. Please, be no, 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 stop. Hey, stop. Take the key first. When you have the key, you don't look for, for a generation. Generation is looking for you. Not only the generation that trusts your message, even those who do not like your message will start looking for you. <laughs> he left. And then after he left, the king sent messenger to every nation because there is no rain. He said, there will not be a drop of rain. And the, the, the heavens were closed. Therefore, the king said, remember what that crazy guy said? Touch your neighbor, he said, I'm not crazy, I'm not just, but I'm just be driven by the Holy Spirit, by the will of God. You are not crazy. When you follow God, you may, people may think you are crazy, but you are not crazy. But because it's, what, what is above is higher than what is down here. Yeah, you just obey the voice you have heard from above. And then, when they couldn't find him, he said, okay. If you find him, please inform me. Oh, that's, good. that's what he did. He went. He's, he went through things. I'm not going to talk about that because of time. And then finally, the Lord said, you know, Elijah, it's time. It's time for you to go back and to bring the rain. Open. Uh, use your key. Everybody hold something, hold it to something, hold it to something. This morning, the Lord told me that this is an impartation morning. It's not the preaching morning, it's this impartation morning. Hold something up, hold something up. Because Jesus said, I have given you the, 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 the key of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. We have the keys, we have the keys, we have the keys, we have the keys of the kingdom. When, when, when you have the key to the kingdom, and, 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 and then you, the, the Lord said, okay, now, I, as you have locked it before, now I want you to open it. We lock what we need to be locked. We open what needed to be opened. At the right timing, at the Lord's timing, according to the voice of the Lord. He just didn't want it to go and open it because he felt bad for his people. But he said, I have done this according to the word of the Lord. Now, here is what he did. If we want, if you want a fire and want it to use your authority, the number one thing after prayer is restoring the altar. Come on, come on. Restoring the altar. When we neglect the, the altar, we lose the fire. In order, in order to bring back the fire, in addition to praying and seeking the Lord, we need to restore the altar. That's what he did. He restored the altar of the Lord that was in ruin. That's the first thing he did. After he restored the altar, he came back. He didn't talk to the king. Now he just simply said, okay, let me, let me, let me just restore. But they are watching. The king is watching. Everybody is watching. Let me just restore. And the one who will respond with fire, let him be a true God. After, after he restored the altar, here is, here, is what, here is what he did. He also showed them what the problem was. It really, this looks like the church today. Oh, that's good. That's good. It looks like it. Yeah, you better hit on that. 
There are three things what they, they did. That's why they lost the fire. Number one, they broke the covenant. They rejected the covenant of God. Yeah. When we reject the covenant, when we don't keep the covenant, when we don't keep that relationship with God, we lose the fire. We neglect the altar. We, the, and it, this is what they did. They neglected they, 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 they neglect the relationship with the Lord. And when that relationship was broken, no more fire. No more fire. Number two, the problem was what? They broke the altar. They said, we don't want to worship the Lord. Because when, when you neglect, when you reject relationship, you cannot keep your spiritual life alive. There is no way. Therefore, they broke the altar. And then immediately, this is so important, what happens? When people reject the, the, the covenant of God, when they don't have a, that worship, worship fire, the altar in their place, the first thing they do is they reject prophets. Because they don't want it to hear the truth. Because they don't want it to repent. They rejected the prophet. They, in this case, they, they went beyond just rejecting. They start killing them. Prophets, be glad. At least you are still alive. <laughs> and that, that's, that's, that's what they did. And he said, this is the problem. If this is the problem, and then what? He prayed. He prayed. Watch this very carefully. If we want the prayer, if you want to really pray for the fire of God to come, when the fire of glory comes, there is no boundary. You cannot build boundary around the fire of God. That's good. That's good. You cannot confine the fire of God inside and say, you God, you can have this, you can consume this, but don't touch this. Let me show you what happened. Let me show you uh, five things that, and maybe that, that's as far as I will go this morning, who knows. <laughs> Number one, when the fire came, it consumed what? The altar, the altar, the word of God says is what? Um, what? Our body. The God sent the fire, not for, it's not for your ministry, for your life. Everybody is asking for the fire of God, for what they wanted to do. God says, no, 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 that is a wrong start. I wanted to send my fire for your life. I died for you. I didn't die for your ministry. I died for your life. I wanted to send the fire to you. I didn't die for you for what you can do for me, but I, I died for you so that I can be God in your life. Without my fire, I can't be that. Therefore, I'll release. When it came, it consumed. Paul says, bring your body as a living sacrifice. How many of you want the Lord to consume your total being for his glory? Amen. Just tell him. Just tell him. Just take one minute. Just tell him. I want that fire. I want that fire for my life. The fire of God. The second one. It consumed the wood. That is, the, the, they used the wood to hold what? To hold the, the, the meat, the sacrifice. Whatever you say, I can serve the Lord with this. I have this to serve the Lord. It could be our spiritual gifts. It could be our whatever it is. Whatever you say, I will use this in, in order to serve the Lord. The Lord says, I need to devour that with my fire so that it can be used only for my glory. So many people, they are willing to give their lives to the Lord to touch them with fire, but don't touch my ministry. Don't touch my gifting. Don't touch my healing anointing. Don't touch my this. Don't touch my that. The Lord says, therefore, if that's the case, you can't have my fire. Because we, we, we can't create a boundary for God. Number three, it consumed what? A stone. A stone is something, when you think about a stone, when you think about rock, what do you think? Unshakable, unmovable, something will not melt. 
God says, when my fire comes, it will consume the stone, including the stony heart. I'll give you the heart of the flesh. I'll consume everything. Not only the heart, and also the, the thing you depend upon. If everything will go, I have this. I can depend upon this. God says, when you cry for my glory, I will consume that as well. You can only depend upon me. Nothing more. Nothing. And then, huh, consumed the soil. Oh, are you still? Are you? St are you still ready? Do you still want the fire of God? This one is serious. We are created from a dirt. Soil is nationality. Soil is identity. Soil is culture. Soil is who we are. The biggest challenge is this. That's why even in America, we struggle with racism because no one wants that fire to touch yeah. who they are. Yeah. I am black, I am white, I am this, I am that, I am this. But where is the fire? Where is the fire? If in the house of the Lord you are still counting who you are, where you came from, where is the fire? Where is the fire? When the fire comes, it consecrates the dirt. Culture, nationality. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it. what makes me who I am is not that I was born in Ethiopia, on the dirt of Ethiopia. What makes me who I am is I am born from above. I am born from above. I am a child of God. I am washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I have been set for the purpose of God. It's not our nationality. It's not our, the dirt. When you let him do that, then he says, let me deal with the enemy of your fire. Come on, come on. What will put off your fire? Come on. If you let me go that far, I, can, I know how to deal. I know how to deal with your enemies. That's why I said, I'll be a wall of fire around Jerusalem, a glory within. No one can come in because the fire of God consumes every opposition, everything that trying to hold you back. The fire of God will consume it. No one can stop that. Let me add one more. Hear me. Hear me very carefully. Everybody wants a rain, the latter rain. The Lord said, I'll send the latter rain, the revival, the final revival. Don't you want it to see the revival? A true revival, the final, it's the promises of God. But I have a good news, and also bad news. The good news is God promised that he will do it. The bad news is, until you have fire, you can't have the, ra the rain. Fire has to come first for the rain to come. After that, immediately, here is what happened. When that fire consumed everything, the people who were wavering back and forth, they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. They start shouting, the Lord, he is God. Immediately, something happened to him. He said, I hear sound of a heavy rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound of a heavy rain. Rain. Why? Because the fire consumed everything. Now the curse is broken. The curse is gone. Now God is saying, I am going to release. I am going to break that cycle. That three and a half year cycle of drought. Because of my fire. Now I am going to release. He said, I hear sound of a heavy rain. Brothers and sisters. You can only see what you have heard in your spirit. Once you hear it, nothing can stop it. Nothing. In, or, in order for us to hear it, we have to have the fire. The fire of God. Here is what he said. Immediately he said to the king, get ready. Get ready. What, why? What am I? Why? Because the rain is coming. 
there is, there is no sign. But no, 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 no. There is something I have heard. There, there is something I have heard from above. I heard a sound of rain. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Because, because I am a child of God. I have received it in my spirit. There, the manifestation is going to come. Once you receive it in your spirit, the manifestation is about the, the time issue. Then he said to the king, and then he said to the, to the boy, go and look. Go and look. He said, he went out. Nothing. He said, go back again. Nothing. Go back again. Nothing. Please stop. I can't stop. Why? Because I heard the voice. Even if you have to go back 70,000 70, times or million times, I can't stop because I know what I heard. I know what is in me. I know what is from above. It's not what you see or what you don't see. It's what I have received. It's this what in my spirit. I can't stop. Faith is not an assumption. Faith is believing what God said. Come on, come on. Finally, <laughs> he went out and said, I see a small cloud coming from above. Is that what he says? Yes. No, 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 no. Eh? Yeah. Coming up. Why? When you heard, when he heard the voice, the, the, the manifestation is already there. Yes. Yes. The cloud is already there. Yes. The cloud is already on the ground. It didn't, it didn't come from above. It was also already there. He said, I see small, very small cloud coming up. Coming up. Coming up. Because of the prayer. As, uh, when it started going up, it started spreading out. Started spreading out. Here is what some translation says. In a little while. Yeah, yeah. In a little while. Yeah. Touch your neighbor and say, it's just a little while. It's just a little while. It's just a little while. In a little while, the heavens was covered. The rain came. The rain is not enough. The fire is not enough. There is something we need. This hour, as a body of Christ, let me say this boldly. What we need more than anything is the hand of God. Yeah. It's the hand of God. Immediately, the hand of God came upon the servant of God. God put his hand upon him and said, yes, I have, I have given you the, the fire. I send you the fire. Yes, I have sent you the, the rain. But that's not what you need. What you need is my hand. What you need is my hand. The Lord put his hand upon him. Now he was filled with the strength of the Lord. He can run. He can accomplish. He can go. My brothers and my sisters, this morning, let me finish with this. If I don't stop this, I can't finish. So I can't stop, so I have to stop. This morning, what we need more than anything is the hand of God. It's the hand of God. The hand of God was not for his ministry. The hand of God was for him. The hand of God was to pick him up. The hand of God is to take him to the destiny God has set for him. Amen. The king said, you are going to die because of the rain. And the Lord said, "Ah, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to send my hand. Come on. I'm going to send my hand. He is not going to be killed because of my hand. The hand of the Lord picked him up. How many of you want the hand of God upon Amen. your life today? Stand up with me. Stand up with me. Stand up with me. The hand of God. Yes, we need the fire of God. Yes, we need the rain of God. But more than all those, we need the hand of God. Just cry to the Lord and say, I need your hand on my life. I need your hand on my family. I need your hand on my ministry. I need your hand on my working, on my days. I need the hand of God. I need the mark of your hand on my life. Father, yes. touch each one. Lord, touch it to us. Yes. Yes. Let the mark of your hand rest upon, uh, upon us the rest of our lives. The hand of the Almighty. The hand of God.